here and have okay. us go off of top screen. And hello, everybody. Welcome hello. to Discuss hello. the Tabletop. It's December 3rd, uh, 2022. Last month of December of, of 2022. We've almost gotten through yeah, that year. It's the last month of December, as you, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> Look, it's. I have had a, a, a long You're couple of days. Invention. Yesterday was entirely killing me. Uh, what I did yesterday, I slept until like eleven, had tea, relaxed, didn't have to deal with people. I got up early. Fortunately, not too early. Like the fortune of the people I was coming in with, which were um, my friend who runs my occasional Pathfinder Second Edition game, which I got to chat with her a little bit about. Like she's like. Yeah, life has just been really sucky, so, like, mm, she's, she, she had a um, uh, short top tangent. Uh, she's been teaching a, a class uh, for, I don't know what, I didn't really dive too deep, so on, on, on Sundays, um, mm -hmm. as, like, a side thing, as, you know, not normally part of her job. You know, earn extra money. Uh, hey, she has to prep for it on Friday. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fair. So, doesn't really have time. You know, hasn't had time, uh, because she's been doing that. Uh hopes to one day have it and maybe I'll do something so that's kind of been like on hiatus but went in with her another friend of hers nice nice girl got to meet her uh, got to enjoy some stuff uh, I, I can say like uh, because the first part of this year is my PAX report anyway I can kind of give this uh, summary before I go into report of mm -hmm. what I saw there um, got to do, do a cursory walk of the show floor uh, which honestly um it's bigger than it was, not by a lot, but by a little bit. Um, the main room is now completely filled, Ooh, neat. and I feel like they have less stuff. Uh, they have less extra stuff in the region that they have, like the uh, free play area. Mm. They've made it more efficient, and even in the like tournament area, they've made it all much more efficient. Uh, like this is the first time. That if you have the PAX app and you sign in with your with an email, which has to be the same email that you get your you know stuff with them with, you can reserve a place in a tournament using the app. Uh, so now you don't have to go in person and sign up for something. That's great. Because um, my friend uh, she signed up for a couple of tournaments. Oh yeah, she did a Carcassonne tournament and a Hearts tournament. And she's like, I haven't played Hearts in years. I want to do that. And I'm like, good for you. But then the other thing was, the actual like show floor, much more massive. Um, if you've been to any convention that has aisles of displays of stuff, I will say that it has like someone racing behind me on a street that has uh, 25 miles per hour. Let's see, nice. racing at 40 very, very or safe. higher. Uh, yeah. Um, they have like 16 rows of things. Um, and you, you do have a couple of big name companies like Tabletop Tycoon, Tycoon takes up a huge space. Um, you know, like, uh, God, Warhammer Company, escaping me right now. Games Workshop. Games Workshop. They have a pretty decent sized area. They, they, have like, they, they always have a nice, yeah. these, these things. Yeah. Um, Pokemon for the TCG, they mm -hmm. have a giant area with a. That's that makes sense. Big yeah. old inflatable Pikachu. Oh, and yeah. uh, uh, noting, hey, it was a Poke they made it into a Pokestop. Uh, oh, that's a terrible Pokemon idea. Go. So it's a, it's a gym, actually, in Pokemon that's Go. A horrible idea. Uh-huh. So it, it, they did a bunch of stuff. And also, I discovered by chance in this weird thing, they apparently have some kind of Pokemon Go po uh, event there that you can get like special research and you know mm. some extra bonuses no one says anything about that anywhere so yeah, i feel like their communication hasn't anything. been great by the pokemon company but they were there and well, i could say words about the pokemon company but i choose not to i have harsh words about niantic in their game but it it serves its purpose in my in my life uh that like it's so interesting that I'm like, oh, I kind of want those magic cards. But then I don't get them. Mm. It feels that, that, like, you know, the addiction of collecting something. Ah, uh, you're not, sir. You know. Uh, and I have that in my personality. I like collecting things. Uh, it's some of the reasons I try to, like, if I can, um, you know, 
100% uh, achievements in like Steam and stuff in games because I just I like that kind of completion. Completionist is like deep in me. But anyway, so uh, and then I got to meet um, uh, two people that came in from Nova Scotia. Um, I got to meet uh, Josiah, the Dungeon Dad, and uh, uh, Zero Doxy. I know of those people. Yeah. Uh, I've done stuff with them online occasionally, hang out with them offline. Their content sometimes. Yeah. Um, so the two of them, uh, and Josiah had a very nice uh, Pokemon suit, which it was Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur all over the place. It stood out like there was no tomorrow. He went for a look, and you know what? It, as he said, if anybody strikes up a conversation with you, they know that they're going to be an interesting person to talk to if you're dressed like that. Yeah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> Man, I miss conventions. And then, done that. and then I did my little uh, thing, which I did, which I, ever, I took a tour of every aisle, um, kind of pointing out uh, who's there, what they're showing off, uh, taking like looks at some of the things, uh, some not like long looks. So I spent like five or so, four or five minutes in every one of the aisles, uh, making little recordings. Uh, I don't know how the sound quality is. Got to be honest, it's a convention. Um, I'm close to the phone. Doesn't mean shit. Um, so I don't know how that's gonna go. <sighs> anyway. So, interesting things that I did see there that I can talk about. Uh, I had a couple conversations with a few RPG people uh, and a few uh, tabletop people. Uh, two stand out in my mind that I will kind of bring up here as my kind of initial report. Uh, one, I got to talk to the people at uh, Taliesin. Uh, Ooh, the people hell that yeah. do uh, um, Cyberpunk Red and The Witcher yeah. games. That is a thing I could talk about that I saw. But you may have also saw it. I did see that, and that's why I was talking to him about that, that they're planning... Um, the first book they're going to come out with is the Cyberpunk Edge Runner book. Yeah. But they're planning on a full book for the uh, 2077 coming yeah, out it, after. Which makes me very happy. Yeah. Which I was an interesting discussion with them about how, like, they don't do anything new in 2022, but they mm -hmm. want to keep everything true between 2022, 2040, and 2077 they're doing their best to keep the continuity between them. Which yeah. I'm like, that's a challenge because, like, Shadowrun just keeps pushing the date back. Mm -hmm. Makes it easy for continuity. You just yeah. add new stuff at the end. They're putting stuff in the middle. <laughs> you know? Yes, they are. Which is very tricky, and I, I respect them because I, I, I love um, I love the Cyberpunk tabletop games. They're like, I'm all like Joe. I have a very big sauce for them because they were my one of my first experiences. Mm. Love playing them. Love that Cyberpunk Red is just Cyberpunk 2020, but yeah. with a modern uh, coat of paint. Yeah, um, it was interesting because the guy I was talking to was one of the major writers, and one of the things he does is if you go to the uh, Towson blog, they put out free stuff for Cyberpunk Red. Yeah, they do. And he was saying like he he's the guy who writes that. Um, I didn't get his name because I'm bad with names. He might have said it, and I didn't write it down. And it was just a discussion. Uh, as I walked over there, he kind of like uh, I was recording, and we start. He 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 like was like, "Oh, you're media and doing some kind of thing. Do you want to talk about my stuff? Because I'm the writer here." And I'm like, "I would like to." <laughs> <clears throat> Apparently, he also does writing on the Witcher game. He wasn't there I for the first. I've one. heard the Witcher game is very good. Yeah, uh, it uses the uh, Cyberpunk Red system. Makes uh, sense. But uh, they've kind of updated it more appropriately for the Witcher game one. Um, there's some stuff for... And they're keeping continuity as best they can between both the book and the um, games. Because apparently they have the license for book and games. Because the mm -hmm. TV series is a different license. Yeah, the TV series is a uh, yeah, completely different thing. But uh, their connection with... Uh... Is it CD Product Red? CD Product Red. They were through them. They were able to get the book, and because they have they've got the book license for their for their games, they've got the both. They can do the same kind of thing. They can do book license and uh, game license. Mm -hmm. So they have like uh, it was very interesting because like I was like asked about like you know custom monsters because you know Witcher it has a lot of monsters and stuff yeah. in it too, and like they they have like rules for that that came out with more recently. Um, they have rules that are set up um, in one of the books, uh, depending on what decision you made at the end of Witcher 2. 
and how that would affect uh, your game world if you want to have different decisions for that game. I'm not familiar with the game, so I can't tell you much about it. I've um, only read books. But I've never played a Witcher. Well, I played like a couple hours of Witcher 3 and didn't like it. Yeah. Hot take. Um, the two different type of like sword weaknesses, uh, like the certain monsters are supposed to have them, they kind of refine mm -hmm. that. But they also have rules that if you like want to customize different weaknesses and stuff, they can talk about that. So that was interesting learning about that. Um, Cyberpunk, they were talking about that they've been, one of the interesting things they've been doing a couple times, they've been taking like with their weekly things, taking some stuff from the 2020 line and just updating it. Like they did a bunch yeah. of guns. Um, the one that's coming out this month is Cyberware from uh, 2020 uh, that's Very. been updated. Yeah, Yeah, because I, I often... Cause I, I do want to run Red at some point. Um, the weapon system in the base book is very basic, so is all this I wear, but it's really... It is identical to 2020 mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, so it's very easy to update. Um... I... I'm going to have to get the name right here, because... Uh... Um, because <sighs> so, um, if any of you, and this is the other one, which was a very interesting discussion, uh, how do you spell his name? Uh, Guy name. Fieri. Oh, God. The Dragon Guy Fieri. No. Some like they have like a they, they, this is like on one of their books. Uh, I I'm trying to remember the name because like it's again names are bad with me. Um, um, and what it is is someone was like, you know what we can do? We can take modern America and let's do a sort of like fantasy version of modern America. Mm. So it was almost like you know as if like it's a world where it would have been like Faerun and now we're just modern day. Okay. Um. And so they've come up with a whole bunch of book lines based upon this. Like, there's, like, um... Uh, and they've done a lot of interesting stuff they were showing off. That they've got, like, a lot of, like, you know, how, you know, uh, you know, uh, things like, you know, uh, politics companies work and stuff mm -hmm. like that. A lot of stuff that's very American nowadays. Yeah. And how to include it with, like, a fantasy twist, you know, and, like, a lot of these things, like, um, you know, like... Like they did like a lot of weird classes or, or like uh, archetypes because it's it's a five E compatible setting. It was kind of interesting, um, and they did an entire book uh, based around their version of like uh, a, like a New York City, which they have a slightly different name for it, which was done by um, um, LGBT. Uh, I I never can get that entire thing. The LGBT. Uh, yeah, the the God brain, please work today. No. Brain no work. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, there it is. Uh, LGBTQ plus community. Is that right? God. That, I... that is the correct. Thank you. As a part of that community. <sighs> See, yes. I just. It's been a couple of days. Don't mind you've me. Had a con you've got convention brain rot. There is sometimes <laughs> an A placed in there as well. Okay. Um. There I, are multiple versions of the acronym for convenience or inclusion. Anyway, uh, it's a book that's a lot more based on that. They got a bunch of writers from that from the community uh, to put put out a bunch of different things. Um, um, oh, there it has. Uh, thank you. Uh, Uh, anyway, uh, God, I've got to, like, look up, I, I, I don't have the book up here, which I should have, um, I'll have to talk about it more, but it was an interesting setting that they were showing off there that was, like, uh, it, it's a modern 5e setting, um, and it's just taking, uh, a lot of stuff, um, from that and kind of, like, integrating it into, like, a interesting idea for, you know, you could have, like, a fantasy adventure or, like, something, like, you know, there's the, the, the they, they did make the joke that, like, you could fight, like, all kinds of strange monsters, or you could d dive into something like uh, the most dangerous uh, enemies of all, uh, politicians, you know? 
In a weird fantasy very. world, I'm sure they would be very horrible in various ways. Probably. Um, so, and there was a couple other people that I did have some talks with. Um, I didn't have a lot of in-depth talks. So I'll, I might have a few more on Sunday. Uh, I don't know exactly. Sunday might also just be a really much more fun day and not a lot less work day. So. Yeah, that's the thing with cons. You gotta separate a day for work and then some fun for yourself. Honestly, I just didn't want to go today because I was really tired after last mm -hmm. night. Um, that's fair, yeah. And then the other thing was, I was like, it's gonna be so busy on a Saturday. Yes. You know, um, more if I, I, like I said, if I was paying my own way, or I had a hotel room, it would be different. I'm taking a train in there. You know mm -hmm. how much money the train cost me? It cost me like 13 bucks to go ba yep. both ways. Uh, trains so trains I, are affordable. It's usually just how I did, did cons in Pittsburgh, is I would just be like, oh, I'll just take the train and skip out a day on it or something. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, it's it's nice. It's good. Um, as a follow-up to this, I did want to throw out, uh, because I was looking through uh, my new stuff, and I came across the Kickstarters for three games I did see at uh being displayed at Pax of Books. so i want to throw shout outs to them uh you know um first off uh mycelium uh a mush uh mushling game um, i think i saw i did see someone talk about this a yeah. couple of days ago and it looks very adorable it looks adorable uh it's a funded kickstarter um they they were showing off the game they had their own little booth specifically for this game um uh this this is the thing i have a complaint about pax unplugged sometimes it's really hard to tell who the heck owns a booth it's like that's that's a problem with every convention it's like they're showing off this and this and this and i'm like what's the company who am I talking about? Yeah. Who am I referencing here? Who are you other than the people that publish this game here? Um, so, yeah, they were showing it off. Uh, neat little game there. Uh, they were also showing off. Uh, I did see uh, this one. There's probably a lot more that I saw. That These are just the ones that stood out when I was like mm -hmm. looking through topics. Um, uh, fit to Print here. Uh, another one that's... Um, fin uh, funded a puzzle tile lay, uh, laying game uh, about breaking woodland news um, oh, it's the people the Calico. yeah I saw that I saw them doing a, a little bit of this one too they were having it on display with these like a uh, like a tile building game um, where I assume you're you're basically building a, um, a newspaper like a newspaper and putting it together like the various stories and stuff and probably scoring points through it yeah, this, this, I like this kind of thing. Yeah, um, I mean, like it's again, like it's probably competitive, but it's also like that thing, like it's a puzzle tiling game. So you're basically trying to build the best you can and not really screwing each other over. And I like that kind of competitive. Yeah, you know, just, where you're just doing your own thing in your own aisle. Um, and then the uh, last one I saw, which is also funded, uh, not by a lot, but it is funded. Uh, Tiny in the Tower. Um, it's basically a, uh, they were showing, I believe, off some of the adventures from this. Um, it's a standalone, uh, so it's like basically like your tiny people. Your borrowers. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I just remember this picture of like the, the big old cat with the people hiding from it. <laughs> and I'm like. Yeah, it's just your, your borrowers or, uh. Whatever the Studio Ghibli equivalent was. Yeah, there's something... Amoretti, which was a movie I enjoyed. Yeah, they're basically borrowers from the original book. They just did a version of it, you know. Probably based on that still, too. But I imagine it's just based on the book. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, so, hey, uh, they have a Kickstarter for that one, too. It was neat to see that, uh, up there, and have a, the giant, like, uh, picture that was blocking off the one wall of the, uh, you know, people with the giant cat. I'm like, oh, that stands out, you know? It turns out, when you have a standout display, people remember it. Yeah. Uh, like the big old, uh, space marine in the, um... Uh, Games God, Workshop the, area. The, the big space marine is my favorite thing. 
they, they, they always they, have it on they display. Hold, they haul that thing out for every convention. Uh, let's see here. Like, t Tabletop Tycoon has a giant tree for the Everdell tree uh, for that board game. Um, there was a couple others that had, like, really weird and interesting displays. Like, you know, obviously, the Pokemon company had the, the in the, tape for the, TV, uh, the uh, Tabletop, or the trading card game, had the yeah. big old inflatable Pikachu in front, uh, over yeah, top of it. makes sense. He's the mascot. Yeah. I did get a discussion no, I... with someone about the various Pikachu clones, because they keep making new clones. There are a lot of Pikachu clones. And, uh, honestly, the new one's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, there's plenty of them that I make fun of, like, you know, but they're not bad little creatures. Like, da 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 is, is fine. It's weird. It's yeah. basically fairy Pikachu, and then there's metal yeah. Pikachu, and then there's ghost Pikachu, and aqua Pikachu, and flying yeah. Pikachu. Well, that is true, but there is also a version of just Pikachu who can learn to fly. Yeah. Um, he just has balloons tied to it. I know, but he's no Amolga, which is a flying squirrel, because Pikachu's definitely a squirrel with that tail. Yeah. Uh, the mouse Pokemon is definitely a squirrel. Yeah. Kind of has a squirrely kind of shaped tail. More than a mouse. Uh, I just want Chubby Pikachu back from the original game. Yeah, that'd be nice. Chubby little, Pikachu. Little, little, little puggy Pikachu. So, uh, that was just a little PAX Unplugged report for now. I'll probably have more next week and then un 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 coming in the future. Uh, as I, you know, uh, dive more into stuff and figure out uh, what I'm going to talk about for my things. So, before we get into d d one, I wanted to talk about this really questionable article that I'm like, it's fine, Ooh, but it's article. also like, why did you put this out? What is an owlbear? Because the movie. That explains the, it. The druid woman, uh -huh. who I think is a tiefling, yeah. um, turns into an owlbear in the movie. And at the end they have, can a druid wild shape into an owlbear? And they're yes. like, normally they can't, but because it's basically just a beast, uh, it's if a dungeon master allows yeah. it, it's fine. It wouldn't this break the game. probably balance. put it here because there were months ago when the trailer came out, just a bunch of people just, like, weirdly upset that she turns into an owlbear. So yeah. I imagine Wizards is poking fun at those kinds of people. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure... That makes sense, and it's much more hilarious if that's, like, the full depth of this, is that... Yeah, and also, just... the Albert is basically, at this point, look at, like, mascot of, of, of t Kind of is. It's cute, you know? Yeah. It, it, it like, it, it, that's the thing, is it, it changed from, like, the, like, third edition, you know, kind of, it's still a little monstery, and by, like, by the time we're getting to, like, now, it's, it's, it's just become kind of an adorable, like, you know, thing, you know? Yeah, um, I mean, like... They used to be so ugly, but now. Yeah. They they they've refined the design to make it kind of a, weirdly adorable. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, yeah. So if you want to learn what an owlbear is, um, there's a handy article for you. Yeah. Um. If you if you already don't know. It. So DD One update has a update and a clarification. Before we do yes. the clarification, well, we'll do the clarification first. I'll throw that out here. Hey. They finally have said they're moving on from race and just calling it species. Yeah. They had mm. teased this for a little bit with the lineages. Yeah. Um, that term didn't stick because, in my opinion, it was a, kind of a dumb term. Yeah. I like the use of species more. Species is fine. I, I, I kind of like it. Species is just it's simple and exactly what it actually yeah. is. You know? It's very simple, very, very easy. Um, it's a term that has needed change for quite a while. It's, um, it's the I... weird thing of, like, if I would have kept, like, it, back in the early 2000s, you know, it, it, it's not that it didn't have connotations still, but the thing is, it's sort of like, race is technically used in two ways, it's just the yes. other way has disappeared. We were, back in the day... People were more unaware or just blind to the the connotations of using such a term for this. Yeah. Um, but nowadays we've we've realized, hey, the archaic term we use for this it doesn't really exist anymore. Nope. 
so we should change it. Pathfinder's done it, D&D has done it now. Yeah. Most fantasy systems just opt for not using the term race anymore anyways. Yeah. Um, I've used species for like two years at this point. The thing is, like, I will... I, 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 I'm, I'm going to try to do my best like to not use that at all nowadays, you know? Because it's sort of like Pathfinder, Second Edition, Ancestry, so it's like an yeah. easy term. That's so different, and that's what stands out, I feel like. I yeah. Like well, you know, species has been more now, and it's sort of like... I, I understood why it was used, and I understand why it can't mm -hmm. be used now. And it's like one yeah. of those things that's sort of like... It's this. It's the saddening thing of me of like, the the. It, it's almost like a degeneration of the language in a bad way. Yes. And um, that kind of like makes me more like, not that I don't want to be able to use it anymore. It's I feel bad that like you know something that was used more innocuous became bad. You know. Yeah. Um. I have mostly seen people like praising this change. Because honestly, it's change it doesn't matter. Like for most people, this change is meaningless. But yeah, there are people this change is very important for. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, but most certainly. And so it's glad that they've you know clarified that they're going to do that. Um, and this isn't wizards picking a word. They, as stated in here, they have consulted with a lot of people on this, what the best term would be, and they have determined that species is the best term, because that is what the various creatures of D&D &D are. They're different species. Hey, did you think, that, you know, it's, it's so Some interesting. Some of them are close enough to each other that they can reproduce. That exists in real life. Yes. Um... And a lot of times those are more like sterile, but sometimes they can also reproduce too yeah. themselves. It, it's a chance, you know, like uh, uh, and it means donkeys and horses can get together. We you know, can we can just ignore dwarf forever. <laughs> they will never reproduce because they can't. Dwarfs are a They will monster. never exist again, in <laughs> D because technically they do exist. They are a monstrosity that they should not been, exist. They've just been long forgotten. Look, I they, I won't forget them. I played I, I I want to forget. Them. I look. I can't because I played a dwarf with a twelfth daughter. Rose. Uh, uh, look, I I I had an effort and I went on a quest line and you know I used the power of like a divine being to change her from her pleasant looking form to uh, uh, I'm like. Uh, I, I I believe the words I said to the divine being is I would I would love for the uh, my daughter to be as beautiful on the outside as she is on the inside, and That's so she turned into a nymph. Nice. <laughs> Which I had already had a shotgun wedding with other one of one uh, with one of the other PCs with my daughter, and so right. his response was yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was a gunslinger, so it was a literal shotgun. Anyway. Mm. Uh, we got uh, the cleric and revised species. Hey, look at yeah. that. Uh, I'm gonna mostly go over cleric because I didn't really look at the species stuff. This version of cleric is mostly the same. There are a couple of very good changes to it. Um, the first change, um, you have a new, like, weird action uh, called Divine Spark which is a channel divinity hmm. uh, it lets you do it lets you roll a bunch of d8s equal to your proficiency bonus uh, you can use them to heal or you can use them to deal radiant damage to someone okay decent enough change it, it adds more to channel divinity because um, turn undead doesn't always Come up. Yes. Um, they have added these quote unquote holy orders at level two where you can gain, presumably, instead of. This is the thing with cleric. If you wanted heavy armor and martial weapons as a cleric, you had to pick specific subclasses. You can now at level two take a thing that just grants you those proficiencies. 
Um, you can take one that grants you more spells. Or grants you more spells and um, lets you regain a use of your channel divinity, which is amazing. Um, and the one I like the most, because I've always had this problem, that cleric is bad at religion. Doesn't really make much sense to me. Scholar, you can use your wisdom for religion. You can basically... If you take Scholar, you can substitute your Wisdom for your Intelligence on those checks. That's good. It makes Knowledge Cleric able to use those skills. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one of those things that's like certain one, like certain certain things I'm like, why aren't they the, you know, ability or the, 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 the ability score that feels most appropriate yeah. to who would use them? Yes. Like that is my opinion on it personally. Arcana. That's why I will let people roll these with wisdom. Yeah, like, um, like you know, even even just arguing against the original thing, it's like Arcana history. Okay, great intelligence, but nature and religion feel more wisdomy anyway in a lot yeah, of ways. It, you it know? depends on. It would certainly depend on the context. The thing I find interesting about scholar is persuasion is included in this. Hmm. You can be a pers you can use persuasion wisdom now, hmm. which makes sense if you're a priest. Yeah. So this is some different interesting choices because that also like it, it's sort of like you have now like two options because that's not even your subclass. You've got a holy order and a right. subclass. This is basically what warlock gets. Yeah. You get your subclass and second subclass. Yeah. Basically. Um. Is better choice, uh, better um, variety, definitely already. Life domain. I'll go over those changes because they're a little further down. Destroy undead is gone. In its place is smite undead. Smite undead allows you, when you use your turn undead feature, you roll a number of d8 equal to your proficiency bonus, and deal radiant damage to any undead that are affected. It is better than Destroy Undead because Destroy Undead loses its value immediately. Destroy Undead caps out at CR4 at level 17. Mm. You are not fighting anything CR4 at level 17. That's one of those things, it's like, yeah, it's like the the CR cap for the Destroy Undead is just so low. It, it, Destroy Undead was a useless ability. It, it, it mimics, like, a lot of earlier uh, editions using that, but it was just, they did it so poorly, I feel like. Yeah, this version feels more like um, the Pathfinder channel. Yeah. Where you, you, you burst out positive energy around yourself. And tiny undead will die, and bigger ones will just take some damage. Yeah. Uh, it makes it useful at every level. Seventh level... Um, you deal an extra d8 radiant damage. It's pretty good on your weapon attacks and your cantrips. Ninth, you get another holy order. Divine intervention is, I believe, the same. Uh, yeah, those are the same. Um. um I don't believe Life Domain got a lot of changes because Life Domain is already one of the best clerics in existence. Yeah, the 68 is still kind of meh at level 17, but it's not terrible. It's damage. It's, it's damage versus not doing anything. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how I look at it. It's, it's damage versus not doing anything to something. So, yeah, so. Um, I, I do still think there are better uses of your your channels. Um, so, looking at at least with life domain, life domain. I don't think no, I don't. Yeah, life domain still gets the channel. So, um, again, it, it, it turned out it was made better, um, but. You're still better off using your subclass channel most of the time because it's just arguably a lot better. All right, I'm just looking at these character species then here. So we have um, your 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 furry, the furry. Uh, yep, 
uh, you choose to be a descendant of celestial animal from uh, the Beastlands that went humanoid. You basically choose an animal ancestry from a list. You are... You get subclasses. You pick your fursona. You pick your fursona. Uh, yeah, you just get to be a furry. You just get to be um, a furry. Uh, now, my disappointment in this is there is no uh, snake, which wouldn't fit with any of these categories, because... I don't know, a snake can't fly or climb. Yeah. Uh, they're not particularly fast, and they don't swim. Yeah. Man. Uh, I need more, more, more of them, then, apparently. Uh, Dragon... uh, I imagine it would be pretty. Dragonborn's been changed for, like, the fifth time. You can use your breath weapon a number of times equal to proficiency bonus. That's good. It does level up as you go up the damage. It's not great. 40 10 at the 17th level. I think, I think that Right. So, I think they just went back to how Dragonborn was in Fizzbins, which was the best it's ever been, which I, is kind of funny. Although it does get flying, which is great. Yeah. Fifth level flying, which is really good. Flying is pretty nice. Yeah. It's not broken, <clears throat> but it is. Glad's kind of neat. You choose a giant ancestry, yeah. get some stuff for it. So. Um, hang your feet. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Well, they, they added more of the epic feats or whatever. I still think the epic boon feats are like kind of shit, but uh, at this point, eh. Yeah, You're looks... never gonna make it to level twenty. Yeah. So hey, more stuff updated. Okay. Some spells changed. I want to highlight two spells that changed. Um, aid. It is now just temporary HP, and it affects six creatures instead of three. That's okay. a big nerf to Aid. It makes it not as good, which is, I think, good, because Aid was a very powerful spell. Yeah. Uh, the other one is Barkskin has been changed to be temporary HP every every turn. Hmm. When you cast Barkskin upon yourself, you will refresh your temporary HP as long as the spell is up. Okay. Which I don't value temp HP as much as AC, but <laughs> Barkskin in 5e isn't very useful because it's only AC 16. Yeah. Like, that's the thing is, like, I feel like, and this is the thing that I, I, I've got to say for all of 5th edition and going into this here, buff spells kind of suck a lot. Buff spells are not great because every buff is a concentration spell. Yeah. It, it, it's like it doesn't need to be like a bajillion buff spells like it, you know Pathfinder first edition can suffer from yeah. buff spell too much there are too many buffs in first edition like it, honestly like hey watch me play uh, Wrath of Righteous where yeah. now because uh, two of my buff characters can have their buffs that are over a minute last 24 hours I spend a few minutes casting spells and have like 20 spells on all my characters for 24 hours. It's a lot, you know? It's it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's also a little too much at times, you know? Oh, it definitely can be. I mean, especially in... When you're just playing normal Pathfinder as well, it can be a bit much, because I... It doesn't come up a lot in Buccaneers, but if we had an actual player bard, it would be so much extra work to put all of the buffs on the sheet. It's like, uh, Re Revia buffs themselves constantly. Yeah, Revia is a self-buffer. I'm a self-buffer. Jacob buffs Yakul. That's yeah. kind of it. So we don't need to input all of the buff macros or remember what they all do, which is kind of nice. I mean, the thing is, th at least that's there's a place for the macros that makes it very easy to like yeah. activate them all, which is good. But uh, yeah, so the other big thing with this UA is the dazed condition is back in fifth edition. Okay. Um, when you are dazed, you can only move or take one action. You cannot do both. You can't. You take cannot a take. A, can't bonus action reaction. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to see it back. I like that dazed was a thing. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of different conditions, and having them, you know, I, I feel like sometimes they 
refine the conditions too much. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a like a like a slowed condition. Kind of it's thing. a bit like it, it's a, a a one. It's a lesser version of slow, basically. Yeah. Um. Anything else to mention? Guidance got some clarifications. It now specifies reaction, and it has a limit of ten feet within an ally now. Otherwise, it's the same. Okay. Um. Inspiration is on a D one instead of a D twenty, or a, a nat one instead of a uh, nat twenty. I think that was changed last time, but there's some clarification on that. Hmm. Uh, in influence rules now exist in 5th edition. Um, there's more clarification on the jump rules because no one knows them. <laughs> uh, no yes. one knows what the jump rules are in 5th edition. I love that when they released Haragon for Witchlight, they had to release a fucking article being like, these are what the jump rules are. Hey. No one remembers them. We have we have clarification because remember we were talking about long rest, short rest, did they still exist? They have, they list long rest here and they can talk about it, you know? Hey. Long rest, you know, more clarification what long rests are. Yeah. Um, light weapons are now their own thing. Yeah. Which is, is neat and interesting. Um, um, let's see here. There's some clarifications on on spell casting. Yeah. Other than that, there's not a lot of of major changes. We've got, I think, the full player handbook spell list now. Okay. Uh, so you could start playtesting when more things come out. Yeah, that's good. So, I mean, it's, it's some clarifications. It's good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, 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 are we ready to play test this stuff? Honestly. I think we need, like, two more. Yeah. Um, can we get more classes out? Because I... I'll be honest, a lot of these rules are rule changes I've already been doing. Um, yeah. These... Because, again, what these UAs are is the most requested things from the community so a lot of them are well we've already been doing these things yeah so it's uh, um I think new player is good I'm definitely just gonna yeet away destroy undead and let my players use smite undead instead yeah just because destroy undead is absolutely useless alright so cool Check it out if you're interested. I got the links there. Um, or if you're already on uh, D and D Be uh, Beyond and signed in, you can check it out there. Uh, we got some Paizo stuff. Uh, first off, they've partnered with a group that I don't know what they do. Uh, type forty. You know anything about Type forty? Uh, type forty. I go to their website, and from the sounds of it, they do like like more accessories or something, but I don't know for sure. I, I oh, okay, they're prop culture, um, like, and they're very accessory heavy, it looks like, I think. Look at pop, 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 pop culture, or like... Um, they're design studio. Okay, so, like, if I go to their... Yeah, they, they produce extras and stuff. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's like, I can see that they, they, they you know, like... You can get some items and stuff. So they're going with pa Paizo and probably going to produce... I don't know what they're Prop. going to produce. Props? Uh, collectibles. Collectibles. Like what they do. Okay. So I guess it's, nice. it's kind of like with WizKids. Yeah. But here's a note. When I went by WizKids uh, area on PAX Unplugged, surprisingly, very little is actually board games. Did they have the, the life-sized uh, Drizzit statue? They there? did not. They had yeah. the big old Tarrasque, and it was actually really cool to see that Tarrasque. It's one of those things that, looking at that like uh, one that we saw that's a bajillion dollars uh, up on their website the other uh, week. that one. Yeah, like, looking at that, it's actually really cool looking, but the thing is, it's really hard to tell with pictures online. Yes, pictures of miniatures never look good. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, this looks really cool now. It would be helpful if, really... uh, as well, they put something in the image for scale. Yeah, it, it was like, uh, like, like this big. It's it's actually pretty hefty. Picture like... someone holding it. Or yes. Something. Uh, 
But it was like a bunch of like uh, looks little stuffed things, a lot of miniatures, some miniatures, games, Ooh. and stuff, and then I guess a couple of board games technically there. But so I guess it's going to be at least for like the uh, more side products that they're going to have this company do them for them. Yeah, French is um, fine. It's always nice to outsource this kind of stuff so you yeah. can keep your production clean and focused. Yeah. Um. Hey, uh, the next Starfinder Adventure Path is going to be starting soon, and they've thrown out the uh, player's guide for it, which all the player's guides are always free. Uh, so yeah. Drift Hackers. Um, so it's part of their like Drift Crisis event, uh, and an in uh, yeah. and it's Drift uh, an indirect sequel to Drift Crasher. So it's related to the one they just did. Um, so that it's a group of heroes working to undo the cause of the drift crisis and restore ba balance to the setting. So it's sort of like, it's interesting because it's sort of like, um, I, I like how you could probably place adventures that you make yourself in between these two kind of things, but sort of like, there's this crisis, and here's the adventure with the crisis, and here's the adventure with the res resolution of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's sort of like you you they're setting up that there is a possible like little setting glitch here, but they're not making it something that like you have to have all the time, which is good. Yeah, man, I like you know just glance at this and read Drift Crisis, Dino Crisis. <laughs> make oh, that make that one, Paizo. <sighs> there will not be there will not be no. another Crisis ever. There is never going to be another Dino Crisis game. We're going to get Exo Primal instead. And it's going to be great. Maybe who knows. Absolutely not. I mean, honestly, like, I, I have no hopes for anything great. And, you know, you know, when, like, uh, that uh, game that came out, uh, Callisto Protocol, when it was like... <laughs> ooh, ooh, mostly negative. Well, the thing is, I, I got a, I heard a very good review on it that actually dove into the stuff about it. And, like, the thing is, the person said is, like, the issues here are very bad. But, like, it, it, it's, like if you can work on this and like where they're going from they there there was an essence of something that could have been great there is the problem the big the big issues are the performance oh. the other lesser issues are it's 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 but it's discount dead space it's incredibly linear um yeah. the I mean, to be fair, dead space is also linear but dead space doesn't feel linear Dead Space hides its linearity, I think yeah. is what it is. Yeah. One thing I did see, and I, this is not to me be like, oh, shitting on companies or anything, but something that a lot of companies do nowadays is they'll have, like, little small segments where you kind of crouch down through something or shimmy through a small gap as a hidden loading screen. There are so fucking many of those in Callisto Protocol. Yeah, so many shimmies uh, to load, um, and the combat is... Has a core of something interesting, but it's also like very repetitive, and it gets yeah repetitive I, it, much quicker than something like that. I, I was watching someone play it, and they had the super sizers. They bought an upgrade that um, said it made the like the kinesis throw thing nearly fatal. Um, they tested it. It took like six slams against the wall. Didn't even kill the thing. So the damage values either aren't right, or they don't know what the word nearly means. Yeah. Well, I feel like the Kinesis thing is, like, you use it when you're chucking it into, like, you know, the spinny death spikes, which a prop have sometimes appear in screens. God, yeah, like... <laughs> why does any of that stuff even exist on that place? I don't know. It's it, it's zombies in space, too. It's like... Why it... are there just wall spikes in your building? Also, also, hey, a little bit of spoilers, just in case. Uh, um... Uh, it, it's it's basically um, Last of Us, but space because they're fungal cool. zombies. Yeah, it's like I had such hopes for it, and I'm like, damn. I'm glad I didn't pre-order it. Again, like it sounds like there was a core of something. It's just they made some design choices, and the, it sounds like it was rushed. The best thing I heard about it was from a streamer. Um, was basically he said, "It's a game you would buy if it's on sale." It's fun for a couple hours. So, why did we get on that? We said something that got I don't on that. fucking know. I space. can't remember now. I think space. Well, we were talking about space because we were talking about Starfinder. Anyway. Yeah. Um, we'll move on because I don't know. We got to that topic for a good reason. and you know, it I don't, mind, don't remember. But I don't remind you know, either. Um, so, I found something interesting because, like, 
it, it published officially on like uh, well sort of semi officially on like a D&D site was the Eberron book I didn't know that it's technically like another company does it yeah. directly for D&D yes because Wizards doesn't own Eberron yeah so they work with the other company to put Eberron out so it's sort of like I guess like almost officially licensed in a way it's weird um, yeah. but, but it, there's a it, it's an officially licensed setting because it's also based on a book series. Ah, so, yeah, uh, Chronicles of Everon, the, uh, the the book is out now. Because um, I did see the people that do Everon at uh, Pax and Pug too. Uh, yep. As a note. Uh, so it's another Everon book. Um, let's see here. Everon is one of the more interesting settings, in my opinion, and. <sighs> It's not used a lot because Wizards doesn't own it. It's this weird thing that, like, back in 3rd edition when it was introduced, I was kind of, like, weirdly against it because it had some very strange mm -hmm. ideas. But the more I've heard yeah. about it, I'm like, you know, it's not my type of setting to run in. But if someone had come up to me and been like, nowadays, like, we like, do you want to run, keep playing this game that's from Eberron? I'd be like, I'll dive into that one. Oh, I, I loved being a player in an Eberron game because I just got to be like something so different to the standard D and D. Yeah, and honestly, like it, I think the big thing that sold me on Eberron was uh, the Eberron slash Ravenloft crossover with Ghost Train. That's a yeah. demi plane of dread. Just the freaking train from Eberron that yeah, became like a ghost train. Light lightning rail demi plane. Yeah. Yeah, that just is like. God, that's so interesting. You know, it's like that's that's original. I like stuff like that. That's like magic train became magic ghost fucking train yeah. or something. You know, and you know it's connected directly with Eberron too, and it, it brings some stuff with that. You know, and so ah, I don't know much else somebody I could say about it other than the uh, supplement back. Um, this seems to be some setting based stuff, I guess. Um, some lore, rules, mechanics uh, for your Eberron games. So, yes. hey. The 5th edition Eberron book is nice, but it is very uh, limited in what it goes over. Yeah. So, um, more books, better for continuing diving deep in this. Um, you know? Um, and, uh, they technically have a PDF of it. Hey, it's one of those ones that has a PDF. Yay, something Wizards doesn't make. It's $28, but, I mean, it, this is a big... Uh, this book is, is chonky. It's a chonky book, so honestly, it's... It chon chonky books having a, like more expensive PDFs it's also. It's a big setting book. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't bother me too much. Uh, so, yeah. Um, an interesting thing, because we've brought it up before... Um, Space 1889 is getting kind of like... I don't know if you can call it like a, a second edition or like a kind of interesting update. It's Space 1889 After, which they do have, it looks like, some rules for uh, uh, keeping with their original system, but also um, a way to put it into 5th edition, too. Um, yeah, the, they have, uh, if you're find a you hear, they find a book setting compelling, but are uncertain about learning new rule set, you've got you covered. Uh, they have a fifth 5e version of it, too. Okay. Which is that's, good. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, but this was basically, like, it, it's, it's, I guess it's supposed to be technically 1899, but they don't want to call it that because it's supposed to be 10 years after 1889, and there's apparently been a giant war between Venus and Mars. Neat. Yeah. And if you don't know the setting, Nikola Tesla invents space travel. Yeah, it's a weird one. And it's Victorian age, and all the alien planets are technically habitable. Like, Mar Mercury, Venus, and Mars are habitable and have, like, weird places there. I think, like, it it's very um, H.G. Wells, you know, uh, you know, imagination kind of crazy, unrealistic yeah. in a lot of ways. Um. It's not magic, it's science! Or alien technology that they've discovered on places like Mars. True. <laughs> you can go uh, visit the Martians from War of the Worlds. Yeah. Um, and they actually have rules now for you can play as an ogre, an, uh, an automation, or a Martian. He can play as the Martian. Yeah. 
Although they're not weird squid monsters. Like in the world. Oh, the ogre is a Mr. Hyde-like character enhanced and twisted by science. Um, and there's also Venusians. Oh, ooh, or the mysterious inhabitants of the moon. Ooh, moon people. Moon people. Are they whalers? I don't know. They could be. Because it's Space 1889, there could be whales on the freaking moon. Really? Look, this this is one of those settings that I'm like, I would really love to dive into more because it's so out there. But, like, it's cool that they're doing, like, an update for it, you know, with, like, a kind of, like, almost new edition. So, up on Kickstarter and uh, fund it. Ooh. Goddamn space whales. Hey, look, the space whales, you will fight them. And but they will we... Win. Can be whalers on the moon. Uh, Rodeo your trip. Harpoon. Or, or wait, uh, showing up when they're um, uh, when the um, Galactic Council uh, passed the thing to hunt them, and so then you have to be like murder them or like you know, uh, freaking uh, sanctions are on you, goddamn Galactic people. Anyway, um, uh, slight update on something. Hey, the Blade Runner RPG. We talked about it before. Uh, Coming out December 13th, Ooh, nice. uh, finally. A release date. Um, yeah. So, Hell yeah. there's the website. I've linked it in chat. I'm going to link it all those places. Uh, it was just an update that they've got the uh, full release coming up in actually 10 days. So, coming out soon. Um, I think we talked about it when it originally was a Kickstarter. Yeah, we um, had a pretty decent discussion on it. Yeah. I'm all for this kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, and it's a uh, free league press. Um, pretty league makes pretty good stuff. They do. Uh, another group that was there. Hey, Odiphius wasn't there, I will note. Or at least uh, if... Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, but they're, they're European, though, so I guess it's harder to... They are Europeans. Across the... Uh, the <clears throat> um, ocean. Uh, I'm going to talk about River Horse for a moment. If you don't know the company River Horse, uh, they did a... Um, was it like, uh, is it Tales? I think it might be the people that do Tales from uh, Questria, the kind of um, the My Little Pony one. Uh, they're doing Primordia. You can play as dinosaurs. They are the Tales of Equestria people. Yeah, so they basically are making one instead of like ponies. You want to be a dinosaur and go on little animated, like, you know, fun little almost. Uh, I guess, younger audience-friendly adventures with some people that might be younger in your family. Hey, uh, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are cool. Dinosaurs uh, you know, are cool. You know, uh, and the art style, it's very cutesy, kind of adorable. Um, this is, like, one of those ones that I'm, I'm really not against of, and it, you know, it expands that kind of, like, uh, more kid-friendly, or, like, at least, um... Uh, light play style um, uh, and interesting ways and honestly you know uh, I find it fun little dinosaur adventures so I did want to throw that one out there that it, it is a thing um, uh, because it's the holiday season I wanted to mention, mention this one uh, because also it's clever uh, the adventure calendar Mm. <laughs> it's not funded yet, but 21 days to go. Uh, 24 unique miniatures, uh, four 5e sessions, six battle maps, and more. Um, so, you know, uh, you get a miniature a day. Uh, oh, it, they have like a main adventure for four sessions, uh, character sheets, battle maps, and stuff, and a grimoire you can use. Uh, the first adventure is Winter Nights. It's for three to six players of second level. Uh, it's clever, you know. It's, yeah. It it, it 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 won me over to talk about it with clever and it is the technical various holiday seasons. So. It is December. It is December. Um, Catalyst Games got some more BattleTech stuff. Ooh, um, BattleTech. Yeah, I love that game. The other miniatures game that's not Warhammer. Um. It's the Mecha miniatures game. The where, mech one. Well, I guess there are some mechs in Warhammer, but it's mostly well, more people. We don't talk. People don't give a shit about the mechs in Warhammer. Look, 
I, I came across someone that was trying to, like, because they w played the Dark Tide game. Mm -hmm. After they'd played the Dark Tide with some people, they they pulled out, like, watching someone's lore video on the various factions of Battle yep. Warhammer 40k, and, I, and I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Warhammer is a lot. Um, there, were it, there, like, giant, like, mechs that were a family, too, or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, war <coughs> it's important to note that Warhammer 40k is uh, satire, and um, basically just making fun of a lot of things. That's it why is. everything is so extreme. It is. It's very extreme. Although they've kind of dumped the satire thing in recent years and are actually trying to tell a serious story now. It's kind of working. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, for a satire universe they made, they could probably tell some decent, serious tales. Oh, they do. There's a lot of really good books. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, Dark Tide, right? That's the game? Dark Tide is the one video game, yeah. That looks uh, interesting, at least. And at least I understand more, like, you know... Uh, I didn't know the Emperor had to be... He had to murder people to sustain the Emperor yeah, because he makes uh, space travel work. Yes. That's like... That's like, oh! That's things I didn't know about this universe. Uh, yep. I mean, the... There's a lot of weird shit, man. There's <laughs> a lot of weird shit. But Battletech uh, is a lot simpler. All, all praise the Omni Sire. Yeah. You know, I like tech priests, alright? They're the best part of Warhammer. Because they just are people who worship toasters. Yeah. Um, but they've got uh, some new stuff available for Battletech. Yeah. Uh, and they're continuing to kind of push this one. I feel like Shadowrun's fell by the wayside and Battletech's their big new thing. Shadowrun... It's because no one wants to play Shadowrun anymore. Because Shadowrun... Shadow, they kind of fucked it with the 6th edition. Yeah. 6th edition was a real uh, bad idea. And, like... Because I feel like a couple years ago, they were doing some stuff for, like, a little bit of stuff for Battletech, a little bit of stuff for Shadowrun, and then, like, 6th edition kind of killed things. And now they're, like, all in on Battletech and a lot more, like, the miniatures aspect of it. And I'm seeing a lot yeah. more stuff come out now. I would like to see eventually. I doubt they do it again, but I would like to see them redo the Battletech role-playing game. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't personally think they will. Yeah. Um. So, um. That's uh, that's another update. Uh, and the last thing that I want to talk about is something because I've talked about on this show many a times uh the um you know um conan from modifius uh they have a licensing update Sweet. um so the role-playing game line under license from heroic signatures for the cabinet River, will end on the 31st no more restock is being ordered uh and all stock will be sold out by june 30th 2023 uh, so they say pick up those books. Um, um, Howard Swords is now part of Mollus DNA, so we're happy to accept hero, heroic signatures offer to develop our own Conan role-playing game. So basically the old Conan role-playing game that they've been putting out books for up mm -hmm. until now is kind of dying, and they're making their own thing based on, I like, you know... I think that's for the best. Because it, it sounds like they originally had been a lot more licensed under something else, kind of, and working with something else. And yeah. they can do their own thing a lot more now. Um, so, I feel like Modif used to put out a lot of books based they on that. 20 hardbacks. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of like, it, it's a... A, a new kind of uh, direction for it. Uh, uh, it sounds like it, it's Monolith that's going to be the main thing behind it. And Monolith... Modifius, I'm not... It, it sounds like they might still, like... They might be involved in the pu publishing, maybe. We'll have to see kind of how it goes, because they do a lot of publishing. But they're yeah. kind of, like, turning over the reins. Um, uh... Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to see how this works, because I, I can't really understand from a lot of these statements. What Licensing really... is a very difficult thing to understand. There will probably be more clarifications as it comes. Um... Yeah. 
develop our own. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm all for them developing their own. I, I like the system they have. Yeah. So it sounds like, yeah, um, the statement tells me that, like, Modifius directly might be, like, taking a little bit of hands off, but it's under their blog, so it confused me, and I don't know where the statements end. Um, oh, I will, we'll see what they do, and then maybe we'll understand it more. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. What the game will be, um, who, who's throwing it out, and, you know, um, you know, where it's published. We'll see. They really did do every goddamn Conan game. I, I remember joking with Joe that Conan had every job in existence. He did. Huh. Well, there's all the topics for today. They went through pretty quickly. Man, those are topics, yeah. Yeah, God. There's a lot of them. Um... We wanna, why don't we do our week in tabletop, and then if we have a little time, we'll hit up a yeah. deeper discussion. Um, because you know we have had we're already gone an hour, so yeah, that's fair. We'll see. We'll see how we're we're doing at the end of that. Mario has had like three jobs lately. Uh huh. He's, been a, he's a plumber. He's a doctor. Um, a sports star. He's a sports star. Well, I guess he's an Olympian because that would mean he could do multiple yeah. sports. He does multiple sports. He's also Chris Pratt. <laughs> what was it? They they did another trailer. Uh, j- joking aside, they did another trailer for that. Great, except for Chris Pratt. Yeah, he's just Chris Pratt. My it's favorite Chris thing Pratt. about the Mario movie is that there was like a TikTok or something promoting it. That was Chris Pratt just like practicing his Mario voice. Like it's me, Mario. That's not going to be the voice. Trailer comes out the next day. It's me, a Mario. <laughs> Just his fucking Chris Pratt voice. Um, Jack Black sounds great, that though. Yeah. His yeah. Bowser. A good Bowser. Uh, I didn't mind the uh, woman doing uh, Princess Peach. Peach. Great. Yeah. I like Charlie Day as Luigi. Yeah. So uh, we haven't heard Seth Rogen other than doing monk like because honestly, Donkey Kong normally just does Donkey a lot Kong of monkey noises. Doesn't speak. Surprisingly. He makes sounds. He, he does do some words occasionally, and they're really weird, because yeah. they're in, like, like Mario Tennis or something. He says something in between the monkey noises. That is true, but I don't play Mario Tennis. I, I saw someone, like, like uh, looking, like, listening to, like, various voice lines from games of Donkey Kong after that trailer, and it's like, these are weird. <laughs> I love that, like... I mean, the other best part about the Mario movie is the Japanese Mario... Um, is like voiced by a super gruff anime voice actor voice. It does not. It's it's worse than Chris Pratt, but it it's like so cursed that I want to watch the Japanese version. I I'm down for watching the Japanese version with subtitles. We'll see how that goes. Oh, anyway, uh, that'll be a thing. Uh, do we have a Sunday game? We did last week. God. We did have a Sunday game. You talked to a big Null woman. Um, I did talk and to I woman. had to talk to Nobility. Um, I hate nobles. Yeah. I can't for the life of me remember anything in my car. Other um, than that, we had the conversation. We Something had a lot about of talking. The... We had a lot of talking. Yeah. We learned that nobles are corrupt bastards. Yeah. Um, there's no lady who's sus. Oh, yeah, um, the sus lady. The pixie, there's a pixie who rules the city who's, like, a genuinely good person. Um, and then the big man came and tried to kick in the front door, so we got to slap him, or he'll just fireball us twice. Oh, yeah, he showed up with an army of fireball. monsters or something. Um, yeah. It'll probably be fine. Yeah. I mean, like... Look, see, on a wall. That that's the point I remember most out of all this is being up on that wall and the guy showing up. Like there's a lot of talking yeah. that like I gotta be honest, like my brain either it's it's because it. it's later I, in the I week I've shut it's... off a lot. I sometimes don't pay attention to one of the people who are having conversations in character. I try like, to. It happens. Like but, like, like I for fucking years, I don't fucking pay attention to what Revia ever says. 
I don't understand that. I don't pay attention to anything Revia says. It won't be helpful. Well, yeah, we get to go kill a Dragon Man or die trying, I guess. Um, I remember I had Traveler. Huge Traveler game. And we finally got a sh We sort of got a ship? We had options. Mm -hmm. And I think the ship we're going to take, which we're going to mostly own, but maybe not completely own. We're going to... Because we got a deal on it, because we're helping out... We're helping out the guy that's selling it to us for, like, um, we managed to negotiate actually with the person because we need, they need us to help retrieve an item that, like, the boss of this group was kidnapped for. And they're like, we'll go save our boss. But our boss was basically, the reason he was kidnapped is he has control of this really, uh, this key to basically something really important. And we need you to go retrieve that. And if you do, we'll give you percentage off. And we managed to actually get someone who can negotiate and get 50% off the ship, which is a lot That's a That is a lot off yeah. of the ship. So that was really good. And uh, we already had some ship shares, so we mostly own a ship, which is good. Um, and we That's then, I think we're going to take a mining vessel because it can it can haul, we could mine, and we could smuggle, you know. So it's like, it, it doesn't, the only thing it doesn't get cuts down us being able to do is um, uh, passengers, but the mining vessel, because we had like five vessels to choose from, actually has some mm -hmm. military capabilities too. Mining lasers and shit. Yeah, because it was a it was a former it was a military mining vessel actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and it was it's upfitted with like you know they all have the same engines and stuff like that and you know, so it's like there's a lot of stats of those ships that I'm like my brain just breaks. I'm like there's stuff there's, here. Yeah, the ships are a bit complicated sometimes. Um. But I also talked to a cop who was looking for our terrorist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I managed to, like, you know, talk them down because they didn't want to reveal they were cop to me at first. And I was like, this is why I became an explorer, to go out in the middle of nowhere around no one. Because you people just lie all the time. Yeah, well, I mean, if they're a cop, they have to tell you it's the law. Exactly. Also, they were rude. That's fair. <laughs> uh-huh. So. Uh... I managed, oh, I, and I, to, I told them a couple of things that I knew that don't matter to us as a group, but may throw other people around us I mean, under the bus. I mean, that's their problem. Yeah. Also, my character is like, I'm highly uneducated, but very smart. So I'm like, I don't oh. really care about these people. I just want us to leave this station. Fair. <laughs> under the bus, everybody else. Uh, um, so that was okay. Do you do anything on Tuesday? Tuesday, we had Space Game... Um, in space game, he Cell had his boxing match, got his ass kicked. That's right, Frenchman um, versus Frenchman. Yeah, Cell got the shit kicked out of him. Oof. Um, but we interrupted the match like halfway through so we could save a dude. Um, and the plan was going great until Lightning's new character showed up uh, by crashing their spaceship into the space station we were on. Uh, when caused the space station to have a power malfunction, um, so the space station started falling into a black hole. Uh, <laughs> so everyone who didn't get off that space station is dead. Well. <laughs> no, you hacked the power? Uh, we hacked the power, but because you crashed into it, it also fucked the backup power. Ah. I rolled a fix check for this knowledge. Um, we did hack the power, however. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the whole last space station of people maybe, maybe died. Ah. Maybe they escaped. Uh, I don't really care. They're criminals. Hmm. Evil, evil criminals. Uh, and then, uh, an assassin who was my, of my race, people, my species, uh, showed up to kill our pilot because they've seen too much. Um... Uh, I had to talk them down and then had just kind of like killed them because they're a heretic to my religion. Ah. I'm basically a member of the Covenant from Halo. <laughs> um, so yeah, we don't do, we don't like heretics. Uh, I'm basically the Covenant, but not genocidal. Hmm. For the we Emperor? Don't, we, we don't go around <laughs> glassing planets. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, usually. Uh huh. But we uh, do. It is a big religious cult in space. 
Okay. Well, um, now we're going to my home world next to go talk to um, some people, including my character's wife, and then figure out why they want to murder the pilot. Okay. I don't think anything was on Wednesday because Buccaneers is off until this week. We had week. a makeup session. Oh, you had a makeup Wednesday. session. You did. It wasn't. It was like two hours. Okay. Um, it was mostly me doing talking to a because I had to miss a session because I spent the whole ass day at a hospital. Mm -hmm. So I missed that session. So we basically went over. This is what I was doing. Uh, talking to an old companion to get information and stuff um i got another piece of my soul so i'm three-fourths of the way to being alive again oh hey um, mostly paladin Bloods. now i have one blood hunter level left mostly an asimar again progress uh, and then that was kind of where the session ended we kind of just planned the rest of our hunting adventure into the sea Lightning bought a like a hundred pound fish. Don't don't remember why. Um, but we have like eighty pounds of fish now. So eighty pounds of fish. Uh, our alchemy jug is also full of soy sauce currently. All right then. Interesting. Because you could you could put soy sauce in an alchemy jug apparently. I didn't know that existed in 5th edition. Huh. Well, it has tea in it currently, right? You dumped, you dumped the gallon of soy sauce into another jar. Um, and you made tea. <laughs> so you put soy sauce in the alchemy jar, and they're like, well, we've had enough here, let's dump it out, and, and, and uh, yeah, you know... You, just, you, just, you know, fighting is a normal human in that game. Totally. Yeah, not at all a floofy person. Totally never. Never a floofy person. What do you care about? Oh. It's crazy. I think he's never played a fox person. Never. Except for that one time when they were like... It was a continued reference in every goddamn game. I mean, you know, that happens too. The reference. Destroyer of the universe. Nomer of humanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Wednesday. I ran him on Thursday. Okay. Um... Party had finished up their business in the city. Uh, they saved the count from evil Fey mind control. Ooh. And they went on to the next goal. They found a pair of weirdos in the forest. Uh, hung out with them for a bit. Someone mentioned the existence of a flesh cave. You also had a flesh cave, yes! I also had a flesh cave. Woo! The best part is, I made the flesh cave completely independently of lightning. <laughs> um, I had that flesh cave ready to go for like three months, baby. <laughs> um, but someone mentioned that to this character, and they're like, that's weird. We should follow these four, we should follow these five people. They might be evil. Why are they, why are flesh caves a thing? So they got followed by a, two idiots for a while. Um, found a cool skeleton man that they were looking for. Returned skeleton man to the person who was looking for him. Hmm. Uh, they learned uh, that planar travel exists. Ooh. Because the two characters that showed up to meet them on the road were... Yitsuko, the the old ass archmage, but from a maybe different timeline, and her dragon husband. There also might be a time rabbit somewhere in the world. I have to figure her out. Oh yeah, Cell Cell gets real sassy whenever I do something negative towards his character. Which is hilarious. So when Cell picked up the skull of the skeleton man, he didn't take any precautions, so I just had I had him bite Cell's hand for six damage. Uh, and then the skeleton also called Cell a peasant-looking motherfucker. Which is hilarious, because Cell's character's a noble. You peasant-looking motherfucker. You fucking peasant. Uh... Yeah, uh, that game's like super chaos. Um, I love it. Lightning. Lightning has like a robot 
drone from the future that has a holographic like AI lady inside of it. It's like such a treat when this medieval character tries to talk to something from a cyberpunk future. <laughs> uh, uh, sounds fun. Because my, my setting has the whole like lost technology thing that Pathfinder has. Yeah. Did you have um I had Friday. Friday. More me talking. Ooh. We uh went on a boat and fought a chul. Uh and when I say the words fought, I mean it rolled a four on its initiative and died like immediately. Um been there. It, it didn't get a it got a turn. Um it would have landed one attack, but I I have a reaction ability from a feat that lets me just add AC to an ally. So it never got to hit anyone. Mm. It, it died, and I think so was very sad. You didn't get to do anything. No, I, I've been there where you're like, yeah. aha, my well, thing is going happens. to do something. Um, sometimes you make a mage, and then the party casts silence on them, and then drops their speed to zero. And then like, well, all spells in 5th edition are verbal, so uh, she can't do anything. Rolled a two. Rolled a two Poor and got his ass kicked. Poor uh, It got crit like almost every turn as well. Lightning just lightning bolted it twice. And just like did like 32 damage both times. Ouch. This is a poor monster. Um, and then I learned that uh, the, the final bit of my soul is up north yeah, with some crazy dude in a ruin. Uh, the crazy dude may or may not be my character's uh, ex-lover from 30 years ago uh, who watched my character die and now my character is, is back. Uh, so it's, you know, it's going to be a very awkward reunion because apparently he never moved on from the death. Uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, that's going to be weird. Sounds like it definitely will be. It's going to be very awkward. Mm. Uh, that game's fun. I think we're skipping next session to sell his school. Mm. I guess it's uh, end of the... Uh, well, end of the school year-ish, I think, for still. Yeah, because it would be the um, end Last of the semester. semester winter semester. Or, or uh, fall semester. Is it Fall and spring semester. I do remember control. having a school all those years ago. Well, I also know sometimes the there's there's like three semesters to certain colleges. Yeah, or two. I mean, and mine only had two. I think I had two. You they had the optional summer for some stuff. But... Yeah, I could have done summer classes. I'm like, I don't want to take a full ass course in like way less weeks. Uh, the problem is when I went to Temple and I had to take, like, when I was going to Monco and I was just driving mm -hmm. it anyway, it was okay if I wanted to take something during summer just to supplement stuff. Uh, Temple, uh, hey, the buses don't run during summer, so you have to take the train. Mm. Fun. Uh, I did it for at least one summer, and then I didn't do it for any other summers. I never did summer classes, so um, I was just like, nah. Um... We could have a deeper discussion topic. I just, I just don't know which one to choose is the problem. That's the kind of thing, you know. We we had a nice discussion last week. Um, yeah, you know what? We we can talk about this one because well, we talked about a similar topic previously. So we can talk about this one because it's not a huge one, and it, it can go on for like a little bit here. Um, magic item and item crafting. Oh, shit. Crafting. Crafting. Uh, because we talked about... We kind of side-talked about it when we talked about um, downtime and stuff like that. And the fact that during uh, your downtime in a game, you craft stuff. Uh, you can yeah. do stuff, and crafting is one of the things you can do. The thing about crafting in any game that you're going to do is it's going to influence how your game works in a yes. way. Yes. Crafting can unbalance the game a bit. Um, because, in fact, depending on the rules of Pathfinder, it's less unbalancing because you would just be buying the item anyways. Yes and no. I think for Pathfinder, the big difference is, like, it costs less money. 
like it. So it cost it costs less money, but you also just have more items in Pathfinder. And yeah. a lot of items in Pathfinder are just it's a plus one or a plus two. Yeah. I think um it's the kind of situation where like in Pathfinder crafting like I'm gonna tell you, in Pathfinder First Edition, in the organized play section of it, in the uh, Pathfinder Society mm -hmm. stuff, they banned crafting. Yeah. Because it can easily unbalance anything if you're not careful. Um, the thing about crafting is, like, you know, a character's supposed to have a certain amount of wealth to balance yeah. out their stats. If I could get all my stuff crafted, um which would mean, like, crafted by someone in the party is kind of what I'm talking about. Like, mm -hmm. I'm talking about party or ally crafting stuff, so I'm paying half price. Yeah. Hey, I have, instead of 30,000 worth of gold pieces worth of items, 60,000. That's significant. Um, but that's not always an option, and, you know... No, most campaigns don't really allow for you to take the time to craft magic items. And there's also a huge sink of resources and yeah. feats. It, it, it's a catch-22 a lot of times that, like, you know, there's uh, problems and advantages to it. And yeah. it, 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 for something like Pathfinder, where that's obvious for how the system works and how items work, uh, you have to understand that. Like, we're, we might not even talk about magic items. Let's talk about things like Hey, gunslingers craft their own guns. Yeah. Alchemists craft alchemical items. They might use those to sell to supplement prices. Or, hey, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing this certain thing that fires really good. I can make a bunch of alchemists fire for our, like, you know, fighter to throw where it's their sword might not work or something like that. Yeah. Um, there is understanding where who will be crafting in your group and how that would affect your, your, your group. Um, I'm not as familiar with second editions crafting yet because I haven't dove into it for Pathfinder, so I can't say a lot. And <sighs> crafting was similar in every D and D up until fifth edition. Fifth edition has crafting kind of. Yeah. The problem is the rules are so vague. <laughs> And not not great. Um, so we were looking at them, I think Friday, because it had come up. Someone wanted to get a magic armor created mm. out of some monster parts. Um, the work weeks are kind of bad because um, to craft a, a common item, an uncommon item takes two weeks to craft. Mm. A rare item takes 10 weeks to craft. A uh, very rare is 20. And then legendary is like 25 weeks or 30 weeks. That's surprisingly not that long for a legendary item, though. No, but uh, the, the problem comes is, is the gold costs are astronomical. Mm. It's like 100,000 gold to make a legendary item. Because I guess you could technically, in quotations, sell it at twice that. Yes. Yeah. Um, it it's not really worth it to craft magic items in five days. No. It, it's it, and like I can talk about crafting in like other systems. Let, let, hey, we talked about Shadowrun. Guess what you can do in Shadowrun? We do a lot of crafting in Shadowrun. I I played a character that did like a lot of like robotics crafting and shit. You can make your own robots. You can make yeah. your own guns. Um. Uh, make your own programs, which mm -hmm. honestly sometimes is better. Make make magic based items if you build into that for yeah. your characters. You do have to take up some kind of skills and parts of your resources. Now, I think I'm going to say about Shadowrun, it's a system where taking up those things doesn't harm you as much as let's say Pathfinder. If I'm taking all the item creation feats, I don't have any other feats, yeah. and maybe I don't have good choices for those feats for my character but there's there are some like just these are always good choices like I don't know improved initiative toughness yeah. dodge if you have enough just enough dexterity all those are just I could just take them they give me a pretty decent bonus they're good which can help your character 
you know, the item creation feats. Yeah. Going going down the crafting line in Pathfinder First Edition is a massive commitment. Yeah. Um you can craft cool stuff. Like there's again the magic item creation, golem creation. Uh there's like I think better potions and shit. Yeah. Wands, all that stuff. You can do like a lot of that, but you're sinking a lot of feats into doing it. You get the option of like um, messing around with the fact that like you know, oh hey, you know I get this potion. It just like a, a, a cure light wounds potion. If I'm like a, a tenth level uh, cleric uh, and I have a potion crafting, I can do something where I'm like, oh hey, it's a tenth level potion. So yeah. it were like a fifth level, like a fifth level potion. It's more expensive to create, but it now does a D8 plus 5, it heals you, instead of a D8 plus 1. That does make a difference for this. Um, I think, like, something like Shadowrun, it doesn't really affect it the same way, because yeah. it takes time, it takes money and resources that, yes, you do have, that maybe you have to earn somewhere else, and maybe it's a little... You don't save up as much to, to make that, but you also then have to invest those, like, skills and checks and stuff. So that's a system it balances out. Pathfinder, you have to watch it and be careful yeah. and aware of it. it. Sounds like 5e is kind of like a crapshoot. 5e doesn't... Fi, crafting in 5e is, <clears throat> is so bad that it's largely just ignored. That's the thing. It's like... It's, it, it's such a shame because the only crafting that ever comes up is potion making. And the only potions you can really make uh, by rules is written are... Uh, the healing potions. I feel like that's one of those things that, like, we've we've talked about how magic items are kind of just like, eh, in five E in comparison. Yeah, you don't need them. But you don't, they're nice. Yeah, you don't really need them, but they're nice. And I feel like that's kind of like one of those things is like, it's not that I don't want them to be not like to be needed, but I feel like it, it was always a mark of like, I'm a powerful character. I've gone on adventures. Yeah. I have in... a magic item. Mechanically in 5th edition, the only magic item you would ever need is a magical weapon to bypass resistance. Yep. Beyond that, there isn't much mechanical reason to have any other item in the game. <sighs> in a vacuum, obviously. Yeah. Other campaigns, you can make items matter a lot more. Like, if you're in a water campaign, you will probably maybe want, like, the mariner's armor yeah. that lets you like breathe underwater and shit right or a ring of swimming if you're in a like a a, a very cold game you like, like an arctic game you might want magic items that make you immune to cold damage and shit yeah it, it's there can be specific adventures and stuff for that and you know it can kind of pull on but i feel like i don't know uh it's a catch-22 for me when it comes to 5th edition, kind of with magic items. Because it's like, I I do understand there's value in having your character not relying on that. But also, it's sort of like, even in a lot of fantasy media, you know, a lot of characters will have, I've got this cool sword, I've got this cool armor, I've got yeah, this cool like, bow, you know? It's... Aragorn wouldn't be nearly as cool if he didn't have the sword. Right, Gandalf. If you didn't have a staff, yeah. So you do need magic items are cool in fifth edition because it gives you a signature thing. Yeah, is my opinion. It, you know, it's like you know, even like for people that you can't maybe define them as magic items, like you know, Legolas and Gimli. Let's say like Legolas, he has a bow, but like it's like he's got a well crafted elven bow, and he's like you know an elven prince, and Gimli is like an important dwarf in his group, and he's probably got like an axe passed down through his family or something yeah. that you know, it's got it's got history soul to it you know yeah. and you want your characters to have these kind of things that feel like you know if you're just a dude with random weapon that just does cool stuff mm -hmm. awesome but like this is something I do legitimately love in Pathfinder that is specified in Legend Lore um, and it doesn't ever come up but it's a nice detail in Legend Lore, it states when you hit either level 10 or 11, any magical item you have is now considered a legendary item hmm. in terms of Legend Lore. 
So if someone like an NPC would cast Legend Lore on Yuckle's Earthbreaker, it would tell them the history of that item. Makes sense. In game, which is very, uh, uh, it's a detail that will never come up. <laughs> it really doesn't. But it's a detail that makes the world feel more like, yes, you have these signature things about your character and these items that are legendary because you yourself step in are legendary figures. I think they've done a very good job of like um, putting certain things in there that have been um, interesting um, certainly um, and like as, as like you said there's rules for legacy items and yeah. stuff like that and I think like I, I feel like it's just like getting back to the magic items because magic items item crafting you know it, it, it's this like it just it's an essence of like I think customization on your character yeah. beyond I'm you know customizing it for uh, for stats because there's like there's the physical and the outside and it's customizing your outside a little bit more that's I like that you know the mm -hmm. the, the customizing of your outside a little bit more too and that's why I like I'm never truly against crafting magic items I'm just careful with it a lot of times because yeah like um you know nat was a good example of it i've had people that have been bad examples of it i'm telling you i've i've had people that are bad mm -hmm. examples of it you know unfortunately mm. it, because i mostly run fifth edition um if i if if a player wants an item crafted or wants to craft an item, I'll let them. I usually just make up my own rules because, again, 5th edition doesn't have great creation rules. Mm -hmm. um, but what I always do is... For an example, Jess's character in my game has um, some monster parts that can be used to make into a javelin that deals necrotic damage. Instead of, like, a Javelin of Thunder, it'd be a Javelin of, like, Necrotic, right? Mm -hmm. She can go get that made. I place that there specifically because this is a crafting item. You can make it that way. Um, but if someone is just like, I want to make, like, a ring of mind shielding, I don't know what would mechanically go into making that. So it would I would have to do a lot of extra work in 5th edition because the rules just aren't there. It, it's, it's the thing of like to um um it, yeah like Nat's a very good example of it because sort of like I knew Nat was going to be doing some crafting and be a source of it so I could work off of that very early on in the um kind of adventure. Mm -hmm. Um and knowing that kind of thing helps you figure out what you're doing and the thing is the yeah. pirate adventure I also knew you were going to be having a lot of extra money being sent on boat or piratey shit, you know. Hey, you had to rebuild your island with your money, you know. Yeah. So, I was a lot more okay with it. Um, I think a kind of medium example, which was both abusive and non-abusive, is uh, one of my um, Karen, uh, Karen Crow. Mm. I, I, uh, I wrote, uh, did it before. Yep. I had someone who notoriously because they would come in just a little late because we knew they were going to come in late, you know, for our sessions. This is in-person sessions. They worked late. They came right in after work. Uh, you know, they popped in, uh, joined in. They played an old man mm, who was known as a wizard old man who was a transmuter. He was known for because the player would sometimes show up and then fall asleep. The joke was, because he could cast Force Bubble, he would Force Bubble himself. Like, it, I don't know his exact spell. There's, like, a de defensive spell called, like, Force Bubble or something. Um, I don't remember the exact one they used. It's not, like, or like Force Shield. It's kind of like a, a dome of force you put around yourself. To let, like, it's like Emergency Force Dome or something like that. Um, can't remember exactly. Uh, they would do that and then probably fall asleep in that because they were old. This is also the person, they never did it. But they crafted a couple of magic items on her, including one 
which allows you to transfer transmutation spells to an equal uh, to a equal or lower level transmutation spell. We were end of carrying crown. You get like level fifteen. Yeah. Disintegration is a six level spell. Fifteen, yep. you get eighth level spells. We calculated with his high intelligence because he was playing an old man with age categories. He could disintegrate like twelve things in a day if he wanted to, and it's undead. They have shit fort saves. Yep, that's a lot of disintegration. He never did it, but it was like this. It was this like weapon of mass destruction in the background. Now, unlike Kaz, he never actually threatened that we weapon of mass mm -hmm. destruction. But I knew it was there. Yeah, that's fair. And I fair. didn't realize it when I said, "Sure, you can craft a few things." He pulled that item out of his ass. And again, most of the time, he you know showed up, uh, played for approximately a half an hour to forty-five minutes, and then fell asleep for you know after the first hour, showed up, you know, played for a part of it, and then for like the last hour, fell asleep. <laughs> Happens. <laughs> I've certainly been there where I've just gotten off work and I'm playing D&D. I mean, it was it was kind of like clockwork every time we played the session was kind of clear. But that that's an example of crafting where I didn't necessarily know everything, and so crazy shit happened. Yeah, that's why um, if you're gonna do crafting in Pathfinder, okay, everything you craft you DM first. Yeah. Um. So, hey. It's a thing to uh, to think about. Uh, so you know, I think it's the thing that like, if you're going to have stuff be made in your game, um, regardless of how, understand how your game works with it, and understand how it will affect your game, if it will at all. Um. And there are plenty of games, as I said, like Shadowrun, no real effect. It's part of the natural order. Yeah. You know? Uh, probably, like, uh, honestly, like a World of Darkness game, not a lot of, like, professionalized crafting you could do. It's just kind of there a lot more. But you could do some. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh... I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to dive into with this kind of crafting thing. I think that's about it. That's kind of the main crust of it that we kind of like. Yeah. Couldn't hit up. It's um interesting. So it, it's something that you know definitely might come up. Except in 5th edition, apparently, where it's just like... No, there's just like the rules for crafting in 5th edition are so basic, it's never gonna... <sighs> Maybe make some potions or scrolls. Scrolls, you think? You could... Scrolls are the easiest thing to craft in 5th edition. Followed by potions, probably. Yeah. So, like, you know, maybe, like, potions, scrolls, something like that. There you go. So, it's a thing to think about. Hey, we got a deeper discussion topic in. It happened. Um... Bum, 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 bum. Let's see here. I think that is about it for today because we went over our um, week in gaming already. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, uh, I'll be going to pack some plug tomorrow. It's probably going to be a lot less newsy, more just relaxing day, but we'll kind of see how things go. And, you know, maybe I'll figure out some other stuff to report or talk to people just, you know, if I'm looking for some products and maybe just discuss with them. Uh, schedule this week, uh, I'm going to look to having the sort of finale of my Stellaris game uh, on a special day. Because honestly, uh, I feel like I've hit the point in that game where it would take a lot to defeat me. And honestly, I was going to look into maybe taking the Become the Crisis uh, Ascension perk, because I haven't tried that out. I don't know what that does. Um, I'll look into it before I chew it. Uh, because, like, I have almost a as enough political power now to equate the entire rest of the galaxy in um, the uh, council. Uh, almost. I'm considering trying to do that and just voting in 
I rule the galaxy again because that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. But I don't know yet. But uh, I might. Uh, I'm also considering because I have a lot of influence making claim, and I can now make claims on uh, fallen empires just to be like, I claim all the fallen empires and go to war with them and kill them because they've got like each one fleet, and my fleets are now a hundred thousand. So, neat. Your two hundred thousand single fleet is not a threat. Um. But I might, you know, again, it's like, it's that weird point I hit the game where I'm like, I kind of won, but like, I don't know. So, um, then, uh, I will do Pathfinder Wrath and Righteous, which I guess my, my update on that was it was fine. Nothing special happened this, when I played this week, if you didn't see, it was just sort of like rebuilding an army trying to get it to work because honestly it kind of sucks that my really well made army that I'd spent a lot of resources on completely disappeared and I've got to wake one from scratch which uh, just is time consuming and kind of annoying more than just an actual feeling like a reset it's time consuming uh, and then I just did a few like companion missions or side quest stuff you know um, then there will be a uh, course uh my december uh games of choice i'm gonna start uh doing uh parasite eve i play through it again Eat. and parasite eve 2 because it's a christmas game the first one is the second one isn't but yeah it's true um i had actually finished up the last week getting uh one of the 300 junk weapons um just so i will it i've played through it before i'm just you know gonna do that and i i'm thinking of uh playing through the full game and then like making a save right before I fight the final boss kind of stuff and maybe hitting up uh, the Chrysler Tower too uh, this year because I haven't done that yet and showing that off a little bit. But that's kind of hard and repetitive so I don't know if I'll finish that on stream or I'll like do like the first floor and then like save it right before the final one and be like here is the final and I wasn't going to fight all this way and show everybody off because it kind of sucks. And then um, yeah it's the schedule right now for the month. So, uh, that's kind of Ooh. the plan. Now, if I finish up both Parasite Eves, uh, maybe I'll just get back some stuff to a normal schedule. So, uh, anyway, um, I'll be off at, uh, PAX Unplugged tomorrow, back to normal schedule on Monday, and that's about it. I hope everybody has a great rest of your Saturday, great rest of your weekend. Um, I'll probably throw out a few tweets and Discord updates for stuff going on at PAX and stuff, you know, and... That's about it. Uh, so thank you for everybody hanging out. Uh, be hopefully back next week for more uh, tabletop discussions. So I'm going to say farewell for now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.